Oh, hey, uh, this video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hey, Scott Kaisenecko Frerix here, and uh, this is my tutorial on lip sync. Now, a lot of people have been asking me how I do a lot of the editing in Dragon Ball Z Abridged and Helsing Ultimate Abridged and some other parodies that I've worked on both for the team and for myself. And uh, I'm not an exceptionally good teacher. It's why when I used to do those episode breakdowns, I would lead with a disclaimer telling people, hey, yo, these aren't tutorials. They're less about how I do things and more what I do. Uh, there's a big difference. Here, I wanted to be less about what I do and well, more about how I do it. And while I may not be an exceptionally good teacher, and there are probably people out there who can teach this better than me, I at least wanted to share my process with you guys, and I don't know, maybe I can teach you stuff that you never thought of, and that might help make your parodies better too. I'm largely gonna be covering newer animation here. Uh, I will have a segment that deals with older animation, but generally I'm gonna deal with the newer stuff that's got, the less, that's got less grain and less jitter and all that stuff. Uh, and I'm going to cover static shots, I'm gonna cover moving shots, moving characters, but it is gonna be basic lip sync stuff, so I'm gonna save more advanced stuff for later videos where I'll also be covering uh, American animation that uses more nuanced mouth animation, so look forward to that. Uh, but for right now, let's just focus on the uh, on classic anime BS, how about? Although first I should note that I use the Adobe Suite, so Adobe Premiere, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Photoshop, if you don't have the Adobe Suite, I can't guarantee that all the uh, techniques that I'm about to show you, you'll be able to make use of with the tools that you have available. But I do know a lot of people who use Sony Vegas that say, oh yeah, I know, we have our own variation of that. So, you know, if you're able to use any of the techniques I give you with the tools you have available, that's great. Uh, otherwise, sorry, but yeah, I'm, I've, I've been using Premiere all my life. I've been using Adobe all my life. So I'm gonna switch over to all right, cool, and we're gonna go to the front. And I actually, I actually made a small little sample sequence for you guys to watch. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. And now I'm gonna go Super Saiyan. <laughs> Come at me, Frieza. If you're, uh, if you're wondering whether or not the fart noise was absolutely necessary, yes, it, it absolutely 100% was. And don't you dare ask me that again. Anyway, so we're actually gonna take this first shot here and we're gonna make it our basis for the shot over here. Um, now, let's give it a watch real quick. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. So as you can see, Goku's moving in the shot and we'll deal with that. All we really have to do is let's hit uh, Alt, hold Alt and let's move this up to duplicate it. And what we're gonna do First, before we do anything else, is we're gonna select our flaps. Now, what is a flap, you ask? Uh, unless you know what lip flaps are, which if you're watching this video, you're probably already at least aware of that. But if you're not aware of what a lip flap is, uh, that flattering term, this is a lip flap. This right here, the mouth. That is what we, uh, I, people in the anime industry, um, oh yes, me, I'm in the anime industry. Uh, you know, these are called lip flaps and Usually anime characters have three of them. Uh, they have closed, open, and then mid. Uh, sometimes they'll have four or five, uh, you know, for more well animated sequences. Sometimes in anime, but not very often, they'll actually have more nuanced mouth animation where they'll uh, also have like for ah, uh, ooh, e. They'll, you know, really go balls to the wall to uh, help sell certain deliveries and expressions. But most of the time, you're going to be dealing with the three. Closed, open, and mid. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select three frames if you can. If you can select, if you can select three frames, select three frames. Uh, and if you can't, just copy and paste until you have three. Then we're gonna uh, control X, that's gonna cut, and then we're gonna control V over here. Let's just move them out of the way so we don't lose them. Delete the second part, and then we're gonna go back to the front here. Okay, so here we have the closed flap. The closed flap is gonna be the most reliable flap, the one that you're never gonna need to move or copy or paste for the most part if you go to frame hold options, hold on, source time code, okay. Now we can just drag this out and boom, 
we have a, we have a bed that the other flaps are going to basically lay upon. Uh, we're going to that's where we're going to paste them. So let's uh, unmute our audio here, and let's go to this first line. Hey there! Uh, hey there! Hey there! Yo, I'm Goku. Okay, so the main goal with lip flaps in general is to match the syllables. Now, you might think that means that every syllable needs to be an open flap, which, I mean, yes and no. I mean, obviously, you want the more pronounced syllables to be open flaps if you can, but for here, it's gonna be real simple because, I mean, it's just two syllables. Hey there. Yeah, there's not much you can do there. There's, there's not much you need to. In fact, if anything, if you're gonna do anything, maybe four frames of the open flap here. Hey there. And that, that does look a little bit better. Um, and by the way, so as you'll see, I actually had us collect three frames open, three frames mid. Now, why three frames open and three frames mid? Because in anime, they very rarely use less than two frames. Uh, that isn't to say it doesn't happen. They usually do it when they're trying to emphasize how fast a character is talking or if they're trying to make the character look intentionally unnatural. And parodies actually will do that all the time. They'll use single frames on their flaps to kind of sell that, oh, this is just some you know, garage level bullshit, which is fun. That's great. I mean, God knows that purpleized material kind of relies on his wackadoodle, crazy, kind of slapdash editing. I think Goku buys his clothes at the soup store. What about you? I tend to, when I'm doing my anime parody stuff, I tend to never use less than two frames because I want to get as close as I possibly can to selling this uh, as a more natural product. That's part of my humor. I, I want it to feel, I want people to be engrossed. I don't want people to be taken out of the moment with my parodies. So, here, we're pretty good with hey there. these. Um, but one of the first things you're going to run into, and here's here's the second big thing when it comes to lip flaps, and that is what we call labial consonants. Now, what is a labial consonant? A labial consonant is any noise that you have to make by closing your mouth. Fa, pa, ba, ma, va, or really F, P, B, V, M. And when doing lip sync, you're going to want to make sure that anytime you'd have to close your mouth to make a noise, you're gonna want to close their mouths when they make that noise. So we actually have our first close consonant right here. I'm just a When he says I'm, that means that we're going to want to end this on a closed flap. So I'm gonna lay this down here. Uh... I'm just all right, so we don't have a lot of time here, so I'm actually going to use two frames on the mid. I'm just... And then... There we go. So... I'm just a... We actually have two labial consonants here. We have... I'm just... I'm just a... Piece of... Rick... So... I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue. I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue. So... I'm just a piece of recorded... We're actually going to make sure that this one is also two on the mid. I'm just a All right, so I'm doing something uh, a little uh, a little tricky here. What I'm gonna do, since we have so many con uh, labial consonants so close to each other. I'm just a piece of I'm actually going to, and this is going to look a little bit odd at first, but it's actually going to work really well in the footage after we're done. I'm going three open, three mid, three open. Then I'm going to go from open directly to closed. Now, most of the time, you're going to want to go open, mid, closed for it to look natural. But because it's in the middle of a sentence, it's not going to look so obvious. So this is how it's going to look. Hey there. I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help get... Yeah, and see, it's not... It, it, you can barely even notice that it goes from open to closed. Because it's in the middle of the sentence, you know, he's... It's carrying on with the dialogue. It feels natural. And I'm not going to spend too much time teaching you how to do specifically this. This is just going to be a quick primer on my process. Giving you an idea to go off of so you can develop your own is what I really want to do here. And here, we actually have two labial consonants like right next to each other. Help give you so what I've done is I've actually just put a you know a middle flap right here 
for the word give. I'd to help give you an idea. It, it feels mostly natural. It doesn't feel all that different from what flaps do in actual anime. Uh, and it's a great way to cheat when you've got two close consonants so close to each other that it's really difficult to go from mid to close. You don't want to put a fully open one here because then it draws the eye a little bit too much. I'd to help give you an idea. So you just help use give a you an idea of So uh, for this last bit, how to lip sync. See? Of how to lip sync. I've actually, I'm leading in. So I actually ended this with uh, a an open flap to a close flap and then into a mid flap to open to help it feel more natural, especially since he goes into lip sync. So you can ramp the flaps open. Sync, sync, sync. Let's give it a quick watch. Let's 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 see our final product. Hey there. I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. So the funny thing is, I have done this segment no less than 10 times preparing for this tutorial. The funny thing is, I can tell you with exact certainty that I've never done this shot the same way twice. It just has not happened. And that's just how it's going to go. Like, depending on your mood, depending on how you want to experiment, depending on what you think looks natural at the time, it's always going to vary. So spending, I don't want, again, I don't want to spend too much time on this process because as long as you know, hey, try and make sure that you're, uh, you know, hitting those labial consonants, that you're never using less than two frames, that you're always varying it between the mids and the opens, uh, you're, you're pretty good. Like, just, again, experiment and you know find out what feels right to you the next thing i'm actually going to cover is moving background and the reason i'm going to cover this is because it's going to teach us a couple of things that are really important moving forward let's actually take a look at the footage here come at me frieza so obviously we can't just do our normal method uh our normal method where we frame hold and then pull it over because well now we've frozen the looping animation in the background. But now that we've made our bed here, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna zoom in a little bit. We're gonna go to opacity and we're gonna hit this free draw bezier. It's gonna make a mask on this track. Masking is when you select part of the frame and essentially you've cut it out. For those of you guys, for those of you out there who are unfamiliar with masking, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and make sure that I don't leave anybody out. So, and here he is no longer talking. Also, be careful when you're selecting your flaps. As you'll see here, I selected the entire jawline. That's because when he speaks, his jaw moves. That doesn't happen with. The most care like in, in Dragon Ball sometimes the chin will move sometimes it won't just be careful when you're selecting the mouth uh, I always prefer like the chin movement because it's more dynamic but yeah I, I've made sure to choose the chin here but also we're gonna have to choose our flaps so let's move that over right now and let's get our flaps so let's say that's three and that's also three and, and as you can see we're going to control C undo that we're gonna control V over here Move this back. Uh, and then we're going to select the closed flap. We're going to control C opacity. We're going to control V on our flaps over here. And they are now ready for us to lay them down. All right. So I've laid down our flaps. Come at me, Frieza. Uh, but one of the things that we'll notice is that the lightning in the background. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> is actually getting a little bit cut off by our mask. I can move it up, but let's see here. And that kind of does the job. But what if we just wanted to get rid of that lightning altogether? What if we just wanted a, a looping animation that we could use? Well, luckily with Dragon Ball, that's not incredibly hard. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to select... Uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Okay, so there are three looping frames. 
we're going to take those three looping frames without any of the lightning and then we're going to control c to copy control v to paste it on the bottom layer and boom we've gotten rid of the come lightning at me frieza easy as pie no, not even a problem come at me frieza so yeah and uh, also one of the things you might notice about the lip flaps is that when he says frieza i ramp it up again and actually i did this a lot in dragon ball z abridged when characters would say frieza's name frieza it just kind of felt natural that i would ramp up from close to mid to open frieza i'm only mentioning that because it's it's just one of the small things that i started to do over time come at me frieza and it, it kind of made it feel a little bit more natural and and kind of give it some flair come at me frieza the next thing that we're going to focus on is this panning shot over here hey there i'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync so panning shots can be difficult or they can be really easy depending on one factor is it linear this pan is a linear pan what does that mean it means its speed does not change from beginning to end hey there i'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync and boom as you can see it just stops it doesn't slow to a stop it just stops however this is a non-linear pan watch hey there i'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync now you might not have noticed how it slowly started but you probably noticed how it slowed to a stop so our first bet here is that we're going to hold alt and we're going to move this up now our the first thing that we want to do is right click hold options hold on that time frame and boom we have our close slap bed exactly like we want just like we did before um but now what we're going to do is we're going to hit it with a mask try to select the nose if you can because you're going to be using the nose as an anchor all right we've selected the flap and now uh Oh, look at Goku go. He's just, he's just floating off without his mouth now, but that's okay. So we're going to, again, hit alt. We're going to drag this up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the first open flap we can and the first mid flap that we can delete everything else. And then we're going to move this to the front. Then we're going to also take that mask and apply that. It should be fine. It's yeah, it's totally fine. And then uh, we're going to line it up with where the closed flap is. Uh, if you're having trouble lining it up hit difference and then just move it till the nose disappears because then there's no difference it's exactly where it needs to be cool uh set that to normal and then we're going to move the uh, mid flap over we're going to do the exact same thing we're going to hit it with the opacity we're going to set it to difference and then we're going to move it and boom uh, also, maybe move this over just a little bit there, set it back to normal. And then we're going to hit both of these with, that's right, frame hold options, just like we did with our closed flap on the bottom there. That's going to make it so that now we can drag them out to the to our normal three frames. And now we can just do our lip sync like we did before. Uh, yes, it, Goku's going to be moving on the bottom. Don't worry about that. He's supposed to. We'll deal with that in a minute and boom done all right so let's take a look at it hey there i'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync all right yeah obviously goku still just sliding off to the side we got our flaps here but don't worry we're going to fix that because we're going to select our flaps now we're going to right click nest this into a nested sequence and now we're going to go all the way to the front we're going to go up here under effects controls to position and we're gonna hit this little toggle animation stopwatch here, and it's gonna create a keyframe. If we set another keyframe, say over here, it is now going to animate the flaps along uh, where we set the keyframe. So we've moved the position here. Obviously, it's not where it needs to be, and it's not at the end of the animation. We're gonna to wanna to set it at the very end of the animation. So, boop, that would be right here. Now we're gonna move it over slowly and let's set that to difference again so we can there we go perfect actually let's set that at zero 
Perfect, there we go. Awesome. And now, let's give her a look. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. Gorgeous, beautiful, perfect, way to go. So, the reason that worked so well is because, since it was linear and there was no change in the speed, you could literally just set two points and have it move. Also, it was moving on ones. What are what are ones? That means each frame is a different, uh, it, it, it's in a different spot. Uh, sometimes though, anime will animate pans on twos. If your anime is animating a pan on twos, it's gonna get a little bit rough with these types of pans. You're gonna have to adjust as you go along. Um, they're, they're a pain in the ass and they've happened to me before. I hate them, but they do happen. But you might be able to use the next uh, method that we're gonna be showing here. So now we're gonna lip sync a ramping pan. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. So this one's gonna be uh, admittedly a little bit more difficult. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to select our closed flap at the very beginning here and we're gonna hit Control Shift E. That's gonna open up this little box here. Um, it's going to create a screenshot. We're gonna hit OK. Um, now we're going to find our open flap and we're going to do the same thing, control shift E and make sure to import into project. Importing into project will make this way easier. Okay. And then our find our mid control shift E. Okay. I, uh, I did this earlier, so I've still got the old ones in there. Um, and we're going to drag these down onto our, uh, timeline. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make them, you know, we're gonna make them three each, but we're gonna have to readjust them just like we did before. The reason we're doing screenshots, by the way, is that the method that I'm gonna show you is gonna rely, uh, it, it does not like the frame hold option. So this is a little bit more work, I apologize, but not by much, and you know, the results are gonna be good, I promise. I, I promise you're gonna like the results. But we're gonna drag our bottom one out and let's adjust these ones like we did before. Oh man, I, I forgot to, Add the mask but you know what that actually makes it just a little bit easier so how about we do it like that all right now let's do 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 make our mask real quick and all right so we've made our masks and there you know there's goku goes but that's fine what we're gonna do we're just gonna do now we're gonna do our lip flaps just like we were before again we're gonna do it again let's do this all right and Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. All right, now, this is exactly in the place where it needs to be. Now we're gonna do what we did earlier and we're gonna make that nested sequence. However, this time, we're gonna select both of these. We're gonna right click and we're gonna replace with After Effects Composition. That's right, we're breaking out the After Effects, boys. Now, I've already made a uh, new project file. It will ask you to make a new one if you haven't already. So, this is where things get a little bit tricky, a little bit complicated, but I'm about to teach you a very, very cool feature of After Effects if this is one you don't already know. Trust me, it's, it's gonna seem a little bit daunting at first, but once you've learned this, it's gonna open your fucking world, I, I assure you. Let's select the pan shot down here. Let's let's select the bottom, uh, the the, you know, the actual moving shot, um, and you're gonna want to go to window, and you're gonna want to open up tracker here. I've already got it open. So, once you have it open, hit track motion. We're gonna select the news. Select his news. Why his nose? Uh, because it's you know very it's 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 a clear outline. It's easy to follow, and this tracking point. So what you've done with this inner box is you've selected the thing that it's gonna follow. And the outer box is the thing that's gonna search the area. The smaller the outer box, the quicker it's going to render, but it might not be as accurate that way. So it's good to have a, a generally a decent sized box, especially since it's gonna be moving rather slowly. So it doesn't have to be too big though. So you're pretty okay with this size. Usually, you might have, like, if, if you ever have more than two things on a timeline, you might have to edit target. But since there's only these two here, don't worry about it. Also, you can set uh, more targets 
for scale and rotation, but uh, there is no rotation, there's no scale, so we're not going to include them. But note that when you add more uh, tracking points, it will get slower, uh, the render that is. So now that we've got our track point where it needs to be, we're going to hit this analyze forward slash play button and watch it go. Now it can take a minute. Uh, it's, it's trying to analyze the footage and make sure that it has it 100% accurate or at least as accurate as any Adobe product could possibly be. Uh, in the meantime, uh, I suggest you grab a drink, um, you know, maybe take a piss. Bam. All right, cool. Now that that's done, you'll just hit apply and okay. And oh no, why are the flaps over here? They're not supposed to be over there. What's that about? Yeah, no, it's gonna do that every time. I don't know exactly why. I probably should. I don't though, but don't freak out because all you really gotta do, all you actually gotta do is drag them back over. Uh, and let's, let's double check that they're gonna be exactly where they need to be, okay. Uh, with the anchor point. Drag them back over with the anchor point. Do not use position. Use the anchor point to drag this over where it needs to be. Uh, it's also just down a little bit, so I'm gonna move it up. Boom, bam, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Okay, I'm gonna set that back to normal. Now that I've used the anchor point and not position, you should be good to go. So let's see it. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. Beautiful, gorgeous, fantastic. Oh man, look at that. Oh, I, I'm actually really happy with how that came out. Sometimes if you're if you're not careful, it can be a little bit jittery. Hey not there. here. It is it is silky smooth. Yeah. So yeah, that that's the track motion tool. It's really helpful. It's really useful. And if you learn how to use it, uh it, it's it's not just for lip sync, it's for so many things. But what about this shot here? What about this craziness? Hey there! I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. What in the world are we going to do with this? You know what we're going to do with this? We're going to do the exact same thing we just did. And I mean the exact same thing we just did. I'm not I'm not kidding. So let, we're just literally going to copy and paste the flaps from this one onto this one. There's no need to redo them at this point. That's uh, We've already seen this. Okay. So, and, and, and honestly, yeah. Uh, you're gonna have to do the exact same thing. We're gonna have to select them and you're gonna have to make images out of them, but we're not gonna do that here. We're, we, like that's implied. That is an implied step. So we're gonna take both of these. We're going to replace with After Effects Composition. We're going to do the exact same thing we did. We're going to, we're gonna track this nose. The nose knows. Make that just a little bit wider so there's no. Okay, cool. All right. And hit play. And there it goes. Just give it a minute. Then we're going to apply. Okay. All right, it's in place, and let's give it a watch. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. Fantastic, look at that. Now, I used to not have the track motion tool, and I have had to do that frame by frame before. And let me tell you, there is a likelihood that you will also have to do that frame by frame in the future. And I know, that sounds terrifying, but yeah, that might just have to happen. The track motion tool isn't always reliable. Sometimes it's just gonna have to be frame by hor horrible frame. But yeah, now that you have the track motion tool down, the world opens up to you. But lastly, we're gonna start talking about older footage. Now, older footage comes with its own problems. See, a lot of the uh, techniques that we've been talking about aren't gonna work incredibly well with old footage, primarily because of its grain and how jittery it is. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. So there are a couple of ways that we can deal with this. And to give you an example, I'm going to take this, gonna frame hold, gonna drag it out, 
And as you'll notice- Hey there! I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue- The grain is now stuck in place. And that looks incredibly awkward. You don't just expect the grain to be frozen in place like that. Um, I've done it in DBZA, and it doesn't look good. It's something I regret doing, like, a lot. So, it's something you're going to want to avoid here as well. Also, with the way that the uh, frame is shaking, let's see, let's see what happens when we lay down lip sync. Let's grab, uh, let's say... So, I've laid out our lip flaps. I've put a mask on them, and I've laid it over the video here. So let's see how it looks. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. Okay, that doesn't look too bad, especially since you can't tell that a lot of the grain on the mouth is held in place. But unfortunately, one of the things that does stand out is, because of how jittery the footage is, the mouth kind of looks like it's just floating there. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. So how do we fix that? I well, there is actually a way to generally solve that problem, and that is under the effects Warp Stabilizer. It's going to analyze, and we're going to set this to no motion, and we're going to set this to position. And then finally, we're going to go to Stabilize, Synthesize Edges, and then we're going to render it, because it kind of needs to render, otherwise it starts to chug, so we're just going to give this a second. Hey there! And boom, all done. Now, let's see what happens with the warp stabilizer. Hey there, I'm just a piece of recorded dialogue to help give you an idea of how to lip sync. Fantastic. The warp stabilizer, what it essentially does is it analyzes the footage and then adjusts it to keep it in place. And if you hit synthesize edges, it actually synthesizes the edges that it takes away from when it you know repositions the video. It is one of the most fantastic additions to Premiere, and it's really great for shots like this. Now, it's not gonna work every time, but it's way better than what I used to do. What I used to do, to give you an example of how batshit I used to be, is I would actually take a screenshot, edit in Adobe Photoshop, apply a surface blur, Sharpen it. Save it. Pull it onto the timeline. Add noise. Let's say about five. Yeah, I know. You know what? Let, let's lay, no. Let's go with five. Five. Use monochrome noise, and then I'd hit that with a Gaussian blur about let's say two to recreate the effect let me tell you that is too much work <laughs> that is it is it is frankly too much de gosh darn work uh, and it's not even very good it doesn't even do it in the way that you need it to there are actually better ways nowadays to put grain in your footage, but that is what I used to do and I do not regret Not doing it anymore. Let me tell you that But yeah, I think that's basically it. Uh, that was my basic lip sync tutorial uh, I know I did show you some advanced techniques, but trust me There's crazier stuff that you can learn and next time when I do one of these again as I said before We're gonna talk about American animation and nuanced slip flaps I'm really looking forward to that because, while I definitely love working with anime, whenever I get the chance to work with American footage, it is so exciting because you can do some crazy stuff with it. Wait, but you said you only had sex with three different guys. You never mentioned him. Because I never had sex with him. You sucked his dick. It was really nice to actually sit down with you guys and show you my techniques, uh, but I know that I'm not a fantastic teacher and I apologize for that. But if you are looking to get better at Premiere and After Effects, or just graphics design in general, or maybe a different hobby, maybe try Skillshare. Skillshare is an online platform filled to the brim with incredibly passionate people wanting to show you how to turn your passion into a hobby, or maybe that hobby into something more. They've got classes on graphics design, cooking, life management, photography, 
filmography, it runs the gamut. I've had a lot of friends and colleagues also benefit from this service. So if you're curious to give it a try, the first thousand people who click the link down in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. And as I said before, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you next time. Later, folks.